Hi, I'm Davina Shamaya, and just like you, I'm recovering from complex post-traumatic stress disorder and narcissistic abuse. And today I'd like to continue with keys to healing, and I'd like to talk about authenticity. Such, um, yeah, I mean, that's what this whole journey is all about, is becoming or returning to our authentic selves. Um, so as a child living with narcissistic parents, we basically had to give up our, our true selves in order to kind of fit in and try to be accepted into this dysfunctional family. Um, and um, of course, our narcissistic parents shamed our true selves. <laughs> so when we were just being ourselves, when we were maybe crying or doing something and, and you know, we were... We would have been shamed, criticized, um, and so it became very scary and, you know, really just kind of impossible to become our, our true selves because our true self was being punished, like, no, that's wrong, you can't, can't be like that. Um, and so, you know, we started to then doubt, you know, have strong self-doubt and strong feelings of shame, like, oh, I'm not... I'm not good enough. I'm not enough just as I am. I have to change how I do things. I have to change um, my feelings. I have to change myself in order to um, fit in and belong. And we have such a strong need for belonging as human beings. We want to belong to a group. We want to um, have strong bonds with people. But of course you cannot really truly belong um, if you're not um, being authentic and true to yourself, then you have just a, a fake connection, which is not a connection at all, really. Um, so our only real connection starts here with, with ourselves. Um, so we developed this belief that, um, I think Pete Walker said it, um, was like, I have to forfeit my needs in order to be in relationship. This is what our belief became because that's what we were conditioned to do was to, okay, well, my needs don't matter. You know, my feelings don't matter. Um, I just had to put those aside so I can be in this relationship. And um, it's, it's very hard to un untangle that, that deep, um, deep belief but even just being aware that it's there. Um, and I think HSPs, highly sensitive people are really actually highly evolved people. <laughs> um, I believe that's where our world is going to, is to um, a place where people are more sensitive, where people are more gentle, more tender, more highly aware, aware of subtleties, um, more deeply thoughtful, more deeply feeling. I mean, I think that's where human evolution is going. And um, so it's my belief that we are really the forerunners of evolution. And of course, humans are always evolving. So really, I mean, I think I'm just a very small part in very, 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 very small part in the ginormous um, plan that, that God has of, of human evolution. Um, but so, of course, like in, in our families, our, our values were very different <laughs> from our parents. You know, I, I, I sometimes remind myself that it would be like um, like a 10 year old hanging out with a two year old. You know, um, if the 10 year old isn't aware that the two year old is doesn't have the same skills and abilities and and um, capabilities that that, he, that the 10 year old has, the 10 year old is going to be, you know, very um, mixed up and frustrated and confused and angry. And, um, um, and yeah, so I think, you know, when we grow up in these really dysfunctional places, um, where things are seeming very unhealthy for us, um, you know, um, we, you know, we end up giving up our own values as well. You know, we value maybe depth and intimacy, and yet our families are like, 
wanting to just talk about superficial things. And so we end up like going, okay, well, I guess I have to talk about superficial things to be in this family. And that's all you can do because they won't go to you, your level. They're not going to change to be like you. And that's what a, that's what a healthy parent would do would be adjust themselves to fit their child's needs. But narcissistic people are just not capable of that. It's not that they don't even want to, they just can't, um, you know, for example, yeah, and you might value open and honest communication, but your parents were like, no, let's just sweep everything under the rug and not pretend it didn't happen, <laughs> you know, um, and highly sensitive people usually want to express their emotions, you know, they want to like show their joy and their sadness and everything in between. Um, and of course, most of us come from families where no nope, feelings were not allowed and they were suppressed and denied and minimized. Um, and we want to be vulnerable generally in relationships. Like I know I do anyway, speak for myself, but, um, you know, I want to be vulnerable. And my family was like, no, no vulnerability here. We don't show our weaknesses. We don't show our humanity, you know, um, very opposite. Um, I believe in, you know, intuition and listening to dreams and, and, and things like that. And, you know, my family was all just about reason and logic and doing what everybody else does. And, um, okay, you know, and let them and be respectful of that. I shouldn't, you know, um, put them down for that. They, they have their values and my values have switched, switched over the years too. For a while, all I, all I valued was having fun. That was it. I was very superficial as well. So, um, you know, we change, we grow. Um, so as we um, grew up in this family, our, fa our parents really became like our God um, and we distorted ourselves um, and we pleased and we fawned our parents. Um, we became drunk really on this kind of false love and acceptance that we thought we were getting, but it wasn't real love because they weren't loving our real self. They were loving some false image that they wanted us to be. Um, and so this is, becomes an addiction, you know, pleasing and, um, and losing ourselves is really an addiction. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it is a process to, to overcome. And um, it's like, yeah, we, we didn't even know, you know, at the time that we were losing ourselves. I mean, this, we, we weren't doing this consciously. So it was very, an un, very unconscious process uh, of, you know, you know, losing our, like putting ourselves, showing ourselves our feelings and our needs down. Um, in order to, you know, fit in with this dysfunctional, to be accepted by dysfunctional, mentally unwell people. I mean, it seems kind of ridiculous now that I understand that. Um, um, so yeah, it's uh, becoming sober really means having the courage to, to be yourself, to stay steadfast in your boundaries, and to voice your truth. These are, I think these are just really um, such important things for our highly sensitive people. Um, when we believe that we're not enough, then we feel shame. Of course, we feel shame um, when we think like, oh, I'm not a good enough for this person. I'm not good enough for this job or whatever it is. Um, and then we start believing that we have to like mold ourselves, contort ourselves um, in order to you know, fit in. And, and that's not, not the way anybody really wants to live. That's where the shame comes from, is from thinking that, oh, I, I can't, I can't just be myself here. And of course, when you, you're thinking, I can't just be myself here, that brings on a whole lot of fear too. Um, like, how do I need to be? Should I be like this? Should I be more like this? Maybe I need to be like this. Or, you know, it's really um, brings on a lot of anxiety. Um, yeah, so when we start to deeply understand and just really know that we are valuable, that you are valuable and important, um, then you can gradually start to break free from this conditioning that, that you lived in for probably many, many years, if not you know decades. Um, and I think it's really also imp important to have a really embodied sense of this, um, your innate worth. Um, again, sometimes, you know, it's just taking a moment and 
and knowing that you're just here as God's creature, just like a squirrel or a bird or a tree. Um, and, you know, you wouldn't go up to a tree and think, wow, that tree's not enough. <laughs> that tree needs to like her, that branch should be like that, you know, like that tree is, that's the way it is, you know. Um, and God makes no mistakes, as um, Lady Gaga so wisely said. <laughs> um, and coming out of this denial um, is, is really a process of a lot of grieving, like, um, yeah, because there's so much loss. I mean, not only do we end up losing all these fake relationships that we've held on to for so long, um, but we also grieve all the losses. Like, I'm sure I've not grieved everything yet. Um, you know, deep, deep loss of, um, you know, living this inauthentic life and, um, you know, all the things that, yeah, just all the things that we, um, that we lost, all the things, if you think of what could have been, or, you know, um, it's, it's a deep grieving to really realize like, oh, <laughs> and then all how I am, I am, I have all these codependent tendencies and realizing that, realizing that, oh, I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder. I have a disorder, you know, like, um, that I, you know, that I need to do my own work as well. So that is also part of coming out of denial and having that, that humility, that deep, deep humility that, um, you know, that nobody here is, um, is perfect. And it's really just about, you know, knowing what, what's right for you and what your boundaries are, what your values are. And um, I think as highly sensitive people, we are so capable of such flourishing and such thriving because we are so, we can be so very tuned in to our needs and our feelings and um, what we, what works for us, what doesn't work for us. I mean, you know, we can, you know, I know highly sensitive children, you know, I've seen them and they really, they know their yeses and their noes, like, and that was, you know, that was robbed from us, but we can recover that. And um, for me, you know, it's really, I woke up this morning thinking, just thinking about humbly serving God. And um, for me, that's where, it, you know, it, this may not resonate with you. Some people, you know, don't like the word God. So feel free to switch that up. But, um, you know, I think it, by serving God is how I really serve myself because, you know, I've been operating out of this false self and, you know, that's how I got into my last job in the first place was, you know, people pleasing. They were like, do you want to take care of three children? I was like, okay, right. I guess I need to take care of three children in order to have this job in order to be employed. And, um, yeah, it just ended up being a mess. And so now I'm just like, okay, God, you know, if I try to act out of my, my small self, I'm just going to create another mess. Um, so I'm just like, okay, God, you know, what, what do you want me to do? And, um, hope, you know, I know that that is going to allow me to live a life that's more peaceful, more meaningful, and more fulfilling. And I think that's what highly sensitive people, at least that's what I'm, you know, yearning for is those, a life of, you know, peace and deeply connected with myself and others and um, having those meaningful relationships and meaningful work and purpose. Um, and so I guess my, I know just for myself, you know, when I started making myself my highest priority, connecting to myself, to my higher self, to God, and to my inner child, to really always remember that, that inner child that kind of lives within you. Um, I think that is really when when things change and remember that this is a process and in, in fact like a lifelong process that is slow and gradual and to be gentle um as we you know slowly you know start to 
blossom as we were always meant to blossom. So I hope this video has been somewhat insightful or helpful for you today. And I'm wishing you many blessings on your journey of healing and awakening. And I am Davina Shamaya at Boldness Blooming.